kind of smile that makes your skin crawl. No surprise he was surrounded by trashy whores half his age, but what else can you expect from a gangster? Now the question of the day, headshot or heart shot? That was always my biggest dilemma during my missions. I sighed and settled for the head. I held my breath to focus the shot and pulled the trigger. His head practically exploded, sending blood flying all over the horse he was with as his lifeless body plopped on the floor, his security rushing to him, frantically trying to grasp what had just happened. Gotcha, I checked as my lips curved into a grin. I grabbed my sniper rifle, my trusty Macmillan TAC-50, and started packing it up. I dismantled my weapon in record time and dusted myself off. I reached into my pants pocket and pulled out a pack of cigarettes. I hit the bottom of the box three times before opening it and sliding, me, and sliding one out. I lifted it to my mouth as I hummed Fly Me to the Moon by Frank Sinatra. Oh, I love uh, that song. A classic. I slid the box back into my pocket, grabbed my rifle, and made my way downstairs. Oh, he's still alive. The vantage point I picked was an old warehouse building about a mile away. Still humming, I quickly descended five flights off. of stairs to the abandoned building. Sirens screaming in the distance, knowing they were cleaning up the mess I just made. I smiled in satisfaction as I took another drag of my cigarette. You dare swing at me? <laughs> the vibrations of my phone snapped me back to reality. Biting my cigarette, I dug through my bag trying to find that annoying device. What? I answered, more like mumbled because I was still holding the cigarette between my teeth. Is he taken care of? The cold voice asked. Yep, yep, I said, popping the pee up obnoxiously. I know how much he hates that. Good job, Gray. We'll see you at the safe house. All right, see you soon. I said as I hung up. I took a forward. I took a step forward, only to see an object flying towards me. Reacting quickly, I ducked and examined the wall behind me. A very large knife was sticking out of the wall where my head was. Well, look what we have here. A chilling yet familiar voice called out from the shadows. He took a step t forward into the light, confirming my assumption. Still half cloaked in darkness, a solid pair of expensive loafers and a nice looking suit. His Armani suit fit his figure perfectly. He was wearing a white dress shirt tucked in with a few buttons undone, showing his intricately designed tattoos on his neck. He was about 6'2 or 6'3. He had a lean, muscular physique. What a pleasure running into you, Ace. I said with sarcasm dripping off every word. His name coming out of my mouth tasted like poison. I stood up and leaned against the wall as I took a long drag of my cigarette. He grinned a perfect smile at me as he stepped forward again, slowly closing the space between us. It'll be more pleasurable once you stop breathing, he yelled as he lunged towards me. I flicked my cigarette at his face and quickly grabbed his arm and swung it around so it was painfully pushed against his back. I got on my toes to reach his ear. Maybe your uncle can teach you how to treat a lady properly. Oh wait, that's right, he can't. I laughed, my lips rushing his ear. Because I just killed him.